What is your compass? What is the true north that is guiding you so that when you come up against a wall when your biashara actually is an uta, you find yourself passing through, breaking through. So what is it that financial institutions or the banks look at when they want to fund? First of all, your business should be registered. Register your business. Have a business name. It's so easy nowadays to do. There's a one directory you can register your business. So when your business is registered, it gives it legitimacy, so to speak. It doesn't mean that you can't trade with your name. You can't trade with your name. But ladies and gentlemen, let me advise you that it is better when you separate your business, you separate your business from your staff. You and your business are not one and the same person. Automate your business. It helps you even prepare books of accounts. Ladies and gentlemen, the days of I have started my business six months ago, I don't have books of account or management accounts is gone. If you have a system at any point, you can know have you made a profit, you can know how much you've made, which direction you are moving to. What I want to share is just some of the challenges that I've experienced in this um, in the season. It's been a year and a half of running wild, and these are some of the things that I've learned along the way, and I hope that they can be able to assist someone who is perhaps in the journey. Sometimes you open a business and you think you know what the market wants, because at that time maybe you don't have customers yet, you think you know what they want, but actually you might not know. I opened Wild because I found that um, as a plus size woman, I was struggling to find really nice clothing for my body type. And I was like, if me as a fat person, I'm struggling to find, and I feel like I, I know a lot of shops, there must be other people who are also struggling. So I opened my shop to be a purely plus size store. Collaborations and partnerships. Um, and this is like, this is one of those points that I, I, I feel very passionately about. So many of us are running businesses that can intersect with each other, that you can use to be able to cannibalize from, you know, not necessarily cannibalize, but be able to like borrow each other's customers. How do you differentiate what it is that you're selling from the next person? And we can all sell, we can all make money. I would love to encourage us all not to have a, um, a lack mentality or unlimited mentality because guys, there's so much money to be made. As a woman, how many red lipsticks do you have? And still you go and see a nice red lipstick. Why don't I know what? I do think it's important to budget to pay yourself. And I think the way we would think about it is any business should probably be spending in the region of 10 to 20% of your revenue on people, on salaries. And so factor yours into that. Uh, when we started, the two of us took 5% and split it between us. Customer delight, at the end of the day, doesn't matter how much you take care of your people and how well you work as a team, if your customers aren't happy, you're not gonna have a business. And so how do you make sure that your customers are happy? Owning the result, accountability, and for every individual to know what it is they're accountable and to own that. Think about the very long term, or at least for me, that's a five-year process. Um, I did a five-year strategy in 2017. Things, the world went many directions, but we got to 90% of what we had planned. There is power in looking ahead, dreaming, imagining where you can go. Taking partners and shareholders too quickly in the business is a mistake, in my experience. And many times, I think some of you have found yourself there where you're wondering, how do I get my partner out? But since they own 50% of the company, what do I do about them? Because you've gone on a journey where you realize that you are giving a lot more than your partner is giving. And it happened to me as well because I had this idea, but I lacked confidence to execute it myself. But later I learned I've given, and for me, my first business, I gave away 60% of the business. It was hot, yeah? But after a while, three months in the business, I realized I'm doing all the work in the business. Even in Tetronomy, I first had shareholders, three of them. So don't enter into celebrity entrepreneurship or superwoman, superman tendencies, where it must be you, it must be you who goes to see every client, 
it must be you who does everything, it must be you who is seen, it must be only you who gets the exposure. Where do you think that leads to? Burnout. Vision changes. Vision could be, when I started, my vision was just to be able to teach people. Then at some point, I wanted a training center. At some point, seeing people in a room like this was vision. Now my vision is Africa. But the most important vision, apart from articulating it and articulating it into goals, the most important thing vision does is change how you do things today.